you go down one step and go to blue absolutely okay so most of y'all were good with changing this one plus tangent squared theta so i'm assuming the reason why you were good with that is because you realized that that was a pythagorean identity so one plus can cotangent squared theta equals cosecant squared theta ta-da so wait did i do that right yes did i Wait, is it you guys that are? Nope. Uh. One plus tangent. Did I look at the wrong one? That's what I'm looking at. Oh, just kidding. I was like, something's not right. This one. Tangent squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta. So I'm going to rewrite the top. I leave the top alone. On the bottom, what did I just say that it equals? Secant squared theta. Okay, so um, there's a few different ways that you could do this, like all of the problems, right? So the way that I realized that to do it was to separate the two, right? So what I mean by that is if this fraction is the same thing as cosecant times one over secant. Right? All I have to do is put, ooh, hello, put this over one, right? Cosecant squared theta over one times one over secant squared theta is the same thing as the blue step up here. So if I separate them knowing that, right, what I know is this is gonna be, cosecant squared theta is gonna be one over sine. And one over cosecant is the same thing as cosine squared over one. So then that's cosine squared over sine squared. Which equals cotangent. How do I know that? Because when I go to my little Pythagorean identities, I would say, oh my goodness, cosine over sine equals cotangent. Ta-da! And that's how I know that those are equivalent. How did I know that one over secant squared theta equals cosine squared theta? Well, I look at my identities and I'm like, oh my goodness, one over secant squared, one over secant equals cosine. They go together. Ta-da!